father was an amateur woodworker. He had a shop when I was growing up in the basement. That was always a place of great mystery and wonder to me. You'd go down there and there were all these tools. There was danger. And you could make things. I thought that was just amazing. So I had that in my early childhood. I mean, from the very get-go, I thought about building things as just something that you, you kind of, something that you do. My dad taught me a lot of the basic early stuff. So I've had, you know, a lifetime's exposure to fabricating with wood, thanks to him. When I'm finishing a guitar, I want it to be as close to perfect as I can possibly get it. I mean, I want to be able to read text in it. I want to look down and see that I need to shave when I'm looking into the pooled reflection. Ah, they're just so beautiful when they're freshly polished and the wood is underneath there. They really do, they remind me of a mountain stream. The main advantage that, that one of my guitars would have over a factory-made guitar is the lightness of the build. I, um, I build my guitars fairly lightly, quite lightly actually, and frankly, factories can't afford to do it. I mean, there's no room for error. Well, music has always been part of my life. I started playing the violin when I was six years old. I played violin as a classical player until I went to college, and then I went to Berkeley College of Music where I started studying jazz. I've always loved guitars more than violins, even though I'm a much more accomplished violinist than I am a guitarist. But I, I hardly play the violin anymore. I, I love guitars. I love the completeness of the instrument. It's a whole orchestra you sit, you hold in your lap. I didn't build a guitar until I was 40 years old. And when I did, the angels sang. I was able to bring these two things together that I loved so much, music and fabrication. It takes me between 80 and 100 hours to make a guitar, depending on the level of the complexity of the cosmetic. I think you have to have a, a sentimental relationship with your instrument. You have to have uh, you have to be emotionally invested in it. I want an, an instrument to sound good. I want it to smell good. I want it to feel good, and I want it to look good. These are all critical. I've sold guitars to excellent musicians and amateurs alike. As long as someone gets it, and they sit down and they play, and they feel the guitar, and they make a connection to it, I've, my job is, is done. So, this is the moment I've been waiting for, you know, I've just strung up this guitar. This is called Old Paint, and it's called Old Paint because this wood reminded me of an old paint horse. Sort of the beautiful brown and tans. This is Myrtle. It has a sort of a western theme, a bunch of fingerprints on here. Um, western theme with the rope purfling and the stars. I've got stars. Nice white um, tuning pins. I don't know. This is, this is it. This is what you wait for, you know? And I love the voice. It's it's sweet.